Hello and God bless, this is your dear brethren of Tally. And today we're going to talk about a topic which is very important and that is how to try to live within biblical parameters in today's financial system. How to try to live in a, within a biblical parameter within today's financial system. You have to understand that at the present moment we're living in a very corrupt system. It is a system which you cannot put your trust in. It is a system which you cannot make oaths to. It is a system which is meant to keep you in bondage. It, it's, it's made to make you a slave to debt. You know, scripture tells us in Proverbs 22, 7, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the bower is a servant to the lender. It's very difficult when you're in debt. It's very difficult when you're in a position where you're having people calling your home to collect the debt that is legit. And we can get upset, we can get angry, we can, you know, get throw a tantrum. They're calling you so much, how dare they? But the reality is it, it, it was us who signed that paper and got in that debt. So the first thing that we have to do as brothers and sisters in the Lord is stop the justification. Okay? So today we're going to stop that justification and we're going to deal with certain facts that are very important for us to deal with. If you are a brother and sister in the Lord who's struggling, today maybe this may help you. Okay, refocus yourself. If you're in ministry that's wondering how I do things, today I'll leave, give you a little bit of an insight into my life. Understand that the insight that I'm giving you into my life is not for you to mock me and is also not for you to feel bad for me. Okay, because um, I'm going to give you some details about how I do things and how we live, me and my wife you know briefly but brothers and sisters in the Lord we have the scriptures and the number one thing that I had to do myself um, several years back is repent repent for the vanity because in the end it is that vanity that causes us to get ourselves into more debt that we cannot afford and debt that we cannot pay let me give you the example of the churches the large majority of churches, what they do is, they have a vision, right, of establishing themselves in the community. That's how most of them will say. So let's go ahead and build a building. Now, to build that building, first thing they got to do is they got to get a loan for the land. They got to get a loan for the building. And then what happens is, in every single service, what they have to do, because they have a legitimate need, is ask for funds to pay for that need. I'm going to attach my faith and my expectation to the word that the man of God delivered tonight. And I'm going to take that word and I'm going to stand upon it and sow it into your kingdom tonight and see you open the windows of heaven and pour it back into my life. My people are calling from all over with a thousand dollar seed. There is a grace. There is a grace on this tonight unlike anything I could probably describe to you. $2,000 and you will be saved for at least for the next two months. Then you can call back again and donate another $2,000. That doesn't matter. Who cares? You'll get a job soon enough. There's more to your seed than you can imagine. As soon as you donate this money, you will have a job because the Lord provides. Now, God's ways of doing things are a little bit different than that. You know, on the scriptures, based on what I see, we're supposed to live within our means. And at the same time, we're supposed to seek the kingdom of God in all things and let him add whatever has to be added. Now, on the opposite end of that, I know churches that are different. Congregations which have put their funds together little by little and have bought a little piece of land and have built a little building. You see the difference? One, you're getting too far ahead of yourself. The other, you're operating within your means and you're making sure that you're being a proper financial steward and that when people look at your mega church, right, they can see that you're living within biblical parameters. That's the key thing here, biblical parameters. We're living in a society where you're taught not to live within biblical parameters because it's all about how nice things you have or how beautiful things you have. But... You have to understand that when you owe somebody money, 
it's a lot of stress upon your life and it's just completely frustrating okay and if you sign a contract for a car for a house for a credit card you have to understand that Psalm 37 21 it has a verse that stings but the wicked boweth and payeth not again but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth so whenever you're in a position that you're gonna sign something or you're gonna make a decision think about how that decision is gonna impact your family your testimony the kingdom of God how is it gonna impact you and this is what a lot of ministries have to focus on you have to focus on how your decisions financially will affect the brethren and the ministry because some of these churches are getting themselves into debts that they cannot afford they're depending on the income that people can bring not depending on what God can bring and that's why it's dangerous brothers and sisters and that's why it's important to live within your means okay very important the simple things here we're not saying anything that's odd it's common sense things okay because Romans 13 7 says render therefore all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due custom to whom custom and fear to whom fear and honor whom honor we have to keep our word if we sign a contract we got to be careful because what happens is vanity my goodness we've all experienced it okay I'm gonna give you some stories personal stories maybe I'm the only one who suffered from this maybe you, you you're okay but I can remember me when I was younger my goodness I was like 20 something 21 22 and I went into the first car dealership and my heart started pumping my goodness my heart started pumping right and I'm looking at the car and I'm like, man, I want that car, right? But what happens is when you're ignorant and you're young, you make decisions which are inappropriate, okay? And you get yourself in a debt that you cannot afford. And here you are at the dealership. You're looking at the car. Man, nice. You, the, the dealership starts giving you the paper. You didn't even read it. You just sign it off. Forget about it. That's my whip. But what happens is, when you have to pay that car, oh, forget it. Then we have the difficulty. Then we have the struggles. Then we want to blame the collection company when it was us who allowed our emotions and our vanity to do it. Okay? I've had cars repossessed when I was 21, 22 years old. Okay? I know what it is like to have a tow company come and beep 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 you hear the little backing noise in the back and you're in the and you're in the house and you're saying oh my goodness what am I gonna do and they take your car and you're back to taking the bus why because you took that thousand dollar down payment and purchased a car that you couldn't afford versus taking that thousand dollars and buying yourself a car cash that you could have fixed little by little it's living within our means family okay it's not getting far ahead of ourselves because this system is designed to trap you okay and I feel bad for all of us <laughs> you know because we have so many bills to pay but the margin majority of the things that we have to pay they're wants and not needs I know people that have rent to rims do you know what rent to rims are for those of you that have never struggled or maybe <laughs> those of you that have never um, heard of it god bless you all right but there's individuals who actually want to have ni nice rims in their cars i know several of them i've actually thought about it. when i was 21 22 and i got that car i wanted to get rid of rims i didn't even own the car and i'm about to get rid of rims are you kidding me see how ignorant you can be and then you get the rent of tires they got rent of tires people yes people actually want people to see them with nice rims and tires okay and then we have the payday loans. Oh my lord, I was a victim to payday loans and I was a person who loved payday loans for the longest. And But ha what happens is that traps you, okay? You think they're giving you a break because, oh, I gotta pay this, so let me go get the payday loan, right? 
and you go to Amscot or you go to any other place and you sign it off and you come out, you're, you're all, you're, the first time, you're excited. It's like free money. But then when you get paid, you're a victim to the payday loans. You have to go back and pay it and go back and get it out again. Go back and pay it and go back and get it out again. And the interest rates in these payday loans, incredible, incredible. It's all about us making sure that Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Let's make sure that all of our decisions are made towards the kingdom of God. Make sure that when you're making a decision, make it towards God. I, I, know, I know people that I know personally that they're on food stamps, yet they have a cell phone that is nicer than I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm looking at them and they're just hyped up with their big old phone walking around. And I'm thinking to myself, you're in a position that you can't afford to buy food because you're on food stamps, but you can afford $107 a month for a cell phone, right? See, some of us need phones for work, right? All right. But you know that the reality is that it's all vanity. For the large majority of people, it is vanity. It is getting yourself in a debt that you cannot afford. If you can afford it, you work hard for that. Go ahead. God has blessed you in that regard. If you cannot afford it, why are you walking around as pimping as if it's something fancy when you can't even afford food? Do you understand what I'm saying, family? I'm not talking down to you. Okay? As if I'm this financial guru. I struggle. You don't think I struggle? I struggle. Okay? I have, I've had a lot of people. They've, they've emailed me and they tell me, um, you talk about the prosperity gospel because you're rich and you don't work. You talk about the prosperity gospel because um, you're financially wealthy. You know? Because you don't work and you don't... No. Let... I'm going to show you a clip of what I make videos on. Okay? What you're seeing there, that's the little table that I use to make videos. On the left, you're what you're, that's my laptop, which is, as you can see, it's gone through some battles. The screen is completely messed up. So I have to have a little screen that my brother-in-law gave me to make videos on the right. That's what I make videos on. Okay? Why, why is this? Why do I make videos on this? I could easily start saying, hey, brothers and sisters. Would you mind start supporting the ministry? Would you mind sowing seed so that I can give you a miracle prayer package? Oh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, you want to see my videos? Start downloading them and paying $20 for every DVD. But what does that do? That is outside of biblical parameters. Okay? And that is putting brothers and sisters in the Lord in a position that is inappropriate. In the same way that I'm thinking that way towards you, as a responsible father, mother, wife, husband, think about how your decisions will impact your wife. Think about how your decisions will impact your husband, who has to work harder now because of your bad decision. Your wife, who has to work harder now because of your bad decision. Listen, there are needs. I may have needs. You may have needs. But for now, as in my example, this laptop with this little monitor on the side, it's getting me by. And I can assure you, Whenever this breaks down on me, the Lord will provide. Why? Because I'm not seeking the material. I'm seeking his kingdom. There has not been one day where I have gone to bed without eating. Whether it's ramen noodles or it's a burger. But I've gone to bed eating. Have you not? Yes. So if God takes care of you, why are we not going to live within the biblical parameters that he wants so that you can have the peace and liberty in your home and in your ministry? Okay? It's about just letting God take over our lives, even in our financial situation. Most ministers that will tell you this, they'll start telling you, the first thing you need to do is tie 10%. Well, that's not the way I'm thinking. Okay? The reason they say that is because they got themselves in a debt that they can't afford. And they want you to pay for it. That's just the reality. That's the bottom line. Listen. First thing you need to do is repent. Repent, okay? Talk to your wife and your, and, and, or your husband. Sit down your kids. Write down what you 
get paid and what that write down your expenses okay if you're spending more than what you're getting you you're in the wrong okay if you have to continuously pay this game that the system wants of payday loans, payday this, cell phone this, if you cannot afford a cell phone, don't get a cell phone. One of the most funny reactions that I get from people when they say, hey, Tally, can I give you a call? Can you give me a call? When I tell them I don't have a cell phone, they're like, huh? Some think I'm being rude because I'm lying and I don't want to talk to them and that's not true. Others think I'm being too stingy and that's also not true. The reason I don't have a cell phone is because I can't afford a cell phone. Why can't I afford a cell phone? I'll tell you. Because when I started doing this ministry, I was working close to 70 hours a week. Okay? As the ministry has grown, the demand for me to run the ministry, make videos, answer prayer requests, deal with my fellowship website, which I oversee. I have a fellowship website where we fellowship. The ministry has grown. So what do I do? I have to stop working my circular job more hours to sustain the, the ministry, right? And thank the Lord, I have a, a staff membership on my website that helped me out continuously, okay, for free. We all work for free. So when I'm working less secular hours, right, the money has to come from somewhere to pay the bills, right? Well, in my case, I've had to cut the budget in my house. So me and my wife has sat together and we said, all right, she believes in what I'm doing for the Lord. I believe in what I'm doing for the Lord. We we love the fact that um, we get to say, you know, to touch people so that they can get saved. We cut cable. That's the first thing we did. We slashed cable. Number one, you don't need cable. Cable TV, all it's showing you is filth regardless. Okay. All we did was keep the Internet. We have Netflix and they have a just for kids section for your kids where you can monitor where you can see because nowadays it's not so much what kids see in the TV show. It's the commercials. I've seen wicked commercials on little kid, kid shows. Okay. Next thing we did was we um, did away with the cell phones, did away with the home phone. She has an, iP uh, an app on her iPad and the little app that she has, I mean, on the iPod, uh, it works like a phone. As long as you have Wi-Fi on it, the iPod, you click on the app, and you can call. And she can call me, and I can call her. So when I'm at work, she can call me at my desk when I'm on break. And when I'm on my break, I can call her. You see? And that's how we communicate. And that's how we talk to each other. Okay? If I get stranded in the middle of the night, which has happened, I have nobody to depend on. The only one who I can depend on is Jesus. So even if I call her, what she's going to do? She doesn't have a car, <laughs> right? So these are decisions that we've had to make, okay? But guess what? We feel at peace, my family. We feel at peace because the Lord takes care of us, and he will take care of you, okay? I've had ministers write me angry emails, but how am I supposed to support the ministry? How am I supposed to do this? Listen, I understand that are their needs. But we really have to sit back and have a conversation and say, well, is this a need that I created? Or is this a true need? Because a need that you create is you having a cell phone that is one of the latest, most fanciest gadgets. Not a regular cell phone. You can have a cell phone. But I'm talking about the fanciest Every time one comes out, everybody's like, I want the new I this or the Samsung that. But for crying out loud, your light bills do. Your water bills do. Huh? You're on food stamps. How are you going to go and get a, a, the latest cell phone when you can't even afford food? It's about putting priorities back on the table. And as ministers of God, I'm going to show you a clip. Last year, look at all of the times that they tried to renew my website and I couldn't, ha I couldn't pay for it. I didn't have the money. Okay? I didn't have the funds there to pay for it. Okay? What do I do? I just keep on trusting the Lord and keep on operating within my means. That's not a need that I created. I have my little website there. I'm a fellowship worship and, and all of this stuff. And, and what happens? God supplied. I didn't have to bother anybody. Okay? Because God touches who he has to touch. Okay? 
when you create needs for a community or needs for a congregation that you create and then you want to put the burden on them as if it's their fault and 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 manipulate them and say oh brothers and sisters in the lord if you don't help our ministry can continue brothers and sisters and and play that manipulation you're the one who built that multi-million dollar building not them all they're coming is to fellowship and worship god live within your means pastor george a pastor that i know his congregation is in his own house man you know he has like a little building there i mean try to find creative ways to minister because if you're depending on the gold of this world, on the financial system of this world, Revelation 3, 1, 8, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire that thou may be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes of, that thou mayest see. Soon when the financial system collapses even worse, how are you going to pay for that building? How are you going to pay for all of this stuff? You won't be able to. You won't be able to. So might as well, brothers and sisters in the Lord, ministers, humble yourself now. Believe and repent. I know that we want to grow and do all this stuff, but listen, we can grow all we want to. That doesn't matter. Okay? You know, we need to stop treating the church as if this is a big marketing campaign, that how big people know our name. Please. It's about Jesus. Okay? And if you're brothers and sisters in the Lord, who you've gotten yourself in a car debt, a house debt, any type of a debt that you know that you can't afford, believe, repent, and ask God for help. Okay? Ask God for help. There's nothing wrong with having a nice house, nice car, nice clothes. But you have to wait until God provides for that to come in a biblical parameter. You understand me? One thing is to wait upon the Lord to, 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 to open the door. And another one is for you to get too far ahead of yourselves. There's things I want to do in, in, in the ministry. Okay? And there's things that I want to do as a personal individual in my life. Okay? But I have to wait until God opens the door. I'm going to keep on working hard. I'm going to keep on dedicating myself to Jesus. That is my job. I cannot get too far ahead of myself. I'm sorry for rambling. You guys are probably all tired of hearing me talk here. I'm so sorry. I'm not a financial guru. And I'm not wealthy. I don't have the multi-million dollar home. <laughs> I live in a mobile home, all right? Um, all I am is just a brother who cares for you and who wants you to know that there's freedom, not in the vanity of this world, but that there's freedom in Jesus and living within his biblical parameters for ministry. You have no idea the liberty that I feel to preach the gospel, the unadulterated word, and not have anyone tell me, on that because I'm supporting you no it's 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 beautiful it's beautiful believe me minister and, and brothers and sisters in the Lord come out from among the harlot system come out from that 501c come out from all of that stuff because there's nothing more liberating than you just preaching the gospel and letting God supply the needs may God bless you and your family sorry for rambling any clarification that you need below, let me know. I didn't mean to offend anybody, but the truth will set you free. God bless.